Hello, everybody. I hope we are live right now. So I would like to welcome you to our um, session here, being a visiting scholar in the US, opportunities and challenges. Um, I would like to just give it a second for people just to double check that we are live and everything is going good. Um, we would like to um, invite you, if you are uh, watching this online live right now, if you please write a comment, one or two comment, that the voice is coming good, we will start momentarily. Again, this is the session, being a visiting scholar in the US, opportunities and challenges. We are going to have a great panel. Uh, welcome to all of you. I see that people are joining to us. Uh, great, wonderful, thank you for coming. Uh, we would like to start uh, in a few seconds. Hello, everybody. Thank you, Faizan. Uh, he told me that the voice is coming good, so I would like to invite our panelists here. I would like to start with uh, Professor Dr. Olgun Cicek. Uh, Dr. Cicek, welcome. Thank you, Faizan. Welcome. Wonderful. And I would like to also invite Dr. Sedan Doan to our live uh, panel. Uh, Sedan Doan, welcome. Hello, Hojam. Hello. And I would like, thank you. I would like to invite Dr. Gözde Tüptarhan to our uh, panel. Gözde, welcome. Hello. Wonderful. And uh, we have also two junior, I call them junior visiting scholars. I would like to invite Furkan Arasle. Furkan, welcome. Greetings. Uh, we cannot hear for, oh, wonderful. We just heard you, wonderful. And last but not least, I would like to also invite Gamze Kaya to the panel. Welcome, Hello. Gamze. Hello, John. This is wonderful, great. We have wonderful, great uh, people here. Uh, I would like to uh, just tell you, tell all the viewers that the reason why we are doing this panel right now during the, of course, one is Corona days, Everybody's at home and we, we want to stay active. But while we are staying active, we also would like to uh, give people, the viewers, a chance to understand what a visiting scholar does in the US. Uh, but obviously, we can't speak for all universities in the US, but at least for the, as far as University of South Florida is concerned, and M3 Center, which I will explain in a second, we would like to uh, give people an idea of what our visiting scholars do and why they are here. Um, again, I am a McKibben Endow Chair Professor at the M3 Center for Hospital Technology and Innovation in the College of Hospitality and Tourism Leadership. And we are also, um, um, you know, I, I am the director of the M3 Center, uh, editor of several journals, uh, quite active in research area. And we have, um, employed visiting scholars. What they mean is that they're going to speak for themselves in a second, but I'm a big proponent of visiting scholars because we host visiting scholars for a certain period of time. That could be one year, six months. We had visiting scholars to come to us even as short as one month or three months before. Usually, usually, uh, at least all the five um, panelists here that I have are here for one year. Uh, without further ado, I would like to invite all viewers uh, to write their questions to into the uh, comment section wherever that you're watching. This live stream is streamed right now in Facebook, YouTube, in multiple uh, locations. And we would like to welcome uh, Katerina, Faizan, Trishna, Aishagul, Ashnish, Dahia, and everybody. And they are writing great comments to us. We would appreciate them. Uh, again, I would like to maybe start from the panel, uh, Dr. Cech, maybe with you, and Dr. Sedan, Dr. Gerde, Fulkan, and Gamze, the way that I uh, invited you to live show in that order, please. Please, can you just introduce us briefly who you are and what stage are you in your academic career? Obviously, you are all in ac from academia. What are you doing currently? Dr. Cech, with you, please. Thank you, Dr. Jan. It's really great to be here and share all this with our colleagues. Uh, yeah, I am a full professor. I'm almost at the uh, end of my career, but 
we keep learning. So that's one of the reasons why I'm here as a scholar. Uh, I'm based in Cyprus, in Cyprus. I work for the Quality Assurance Agency. It's called Higher Education Council, YODAC. Uh, we do evaluation and assessment and accreditation of universities as well as programs. Uh, as a hospitality uh, management professor, I have worked in different parts of the world, in different universities, private, government. Uh, at different levels, I was the head of the department, dean, and I worked as a director of the university. So I have gone through all these states. Uh, during the last five years, I have been working in the accreditation area at international level. So I was very much aware of the Europe and the Mediterranean. I was curious about the US. And uh, as far as hospitality programs and schools are concerned, how they are doing in terms of accreditation and quality assurance. I decided to compare these two, US with the Europe, and I made a proposal thanks to M3 Center and yourself, the uh, University of South Florida. It's really an honor that they accepted that I'm here now. And hopefully, once we get out, we'll try to continue and, and get something out of that. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Sedan, let's continue with you. Thank you so much, uh, Dihan Hocam, uh, for this opportunity to share our experience. Hello, everyone. My name is Sedan Doğan. I'm an assistant professor at Ondo Kuzmayit University in Samsun in Turkey. Uh, I completed my undergraduate master's and doctoral degree at Akdeniz University in Antalya. And I worked in different uh, five-star hotels and travel agencies between 1996 and 2013. During that time, uh, I, I completed my master's degree while I was working in the industry. Uh, and since 2013, I'm in academia. Uh, I worked as lecturer at Adam Menderes University for four years until 2017. And since 2017, I've been working at Ondo Kuzmaris University, as I said before. And now I'm here at University of South Florida for my postdoctoral research purpose. I'm working with you, my uh, professor, Dr. Jihan Chabanolo, for my postdoctoral research and uh, academic level assistant professor. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Selen. Gözde. Um, firstly, I want to thank you, Dr. Zihan, for giving us a chance to share our experience and opinions. Also, I want to thank you to all the audience. And last but not least, another thanks to all the faculty members here. I'm really happy to be a member of such a great team here. Uh, I got my undergraduate degree in 2009 at um, Anadolu University in the field of tourism and hotel management in Turkey. Then I got my master and doctorate degree from same university on tourism management area. Uh, I got all my degrees from same university because I was a research assistant there and this was a necessary thing. Uh, I focused on destination marketing on my PhD thesis. Now I am working on my postdoctorate project on smart tourism technologies on destinations here in University of South Florida M3 Center. Wonderful. Thank you, Gözde. Furkan, how about you? Please introduce yourself. Of course, I, I would like to greet each and every person that is watching this stream. Um, I'm one of the junior scholars and I have recently finished my master's. Being Cypriot and being part of Eastern Mediterranean University's track under research assistantship, I have had my fair share of understanding the entry level research that has to be coming into the big scenery of father of marketing, uh, which I have interest in consumer behaviors, led me to the place I wanted to be, to be a humble contributor of this distinguished team, which I'm really thankful for. Um, along with members like Professor Cicek, Dr. Sedan, and Dr. Gözde, we have had a nice collaboration. My current state would be that I'm en route for a doctoral track, and that understanding not American Academia is my main goal, apart from my main duty of providing collaboration and efficient and effective research. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Furkan. Gamze, how about you? Uh, yes. Uh, first of all, uh, I want to say to welcome all the 
audience. Uh, my name is Gamze Kaya. I graduated uh, from the Department of Travel Management at Univer uh, Mustafa Kemal University. And I completed my master's degree in business, of, uh, business information management at Mersin University. And now um, I'm a visiting scholar at the uh, University of South Florida, Sarasota Manati. Uh, I want to say thank you so much, Dr. Jihan, for giving uh, such a pos possibility. Sorry, I'm really <laughs> excited now. Uh, and then uh, I have a um, uh, completed master's degree, and now I'm preparing for a, a hospitality PhD program. Within that period, I work to fulfill uh, various qualifications that are some exams and take part in some research. Uh, that's it. <laughs> Wonderful. Thank you. Thank you, you know, this is a great, uh, all of these five scholars are currently at the M3 Center at the University of South Florida. I'm really proud uh, of every single of them. And you see a really nice spectrum here. We have two junior visiting scholars. They are, you know, going towards PhD in tourism. And Gözde has finished her PhD recently, so she is a fresh PhD and would like to continue as an academic career as an assistant professor. Seden has finished a few years back, and she is an established assistant professor, very productive uh, in Turkey and also here as well. And Professor Olgun Cicek has it's the kind of like at the uh, highest of his career, even though he said towards the end of his career, I don't really believe him because he's still. Yeah, yeah I agree. I think it will many, many more years, hopefully. Uh, to never get ending, it. yeah, yeah, you're right. And I would like to start uh, a question from the audience. And I would like to thank uh, Dr. Trishna Mystery. She is also one of our faculty members at the University of South Florida. And her question is a wonderful start. Uh, what factors motivated you to come to USF as a visiting scholar? And how has your experience been so far? So maybe again, uh, Professor Olgun, can we start with you? Short, uh, short answer to this particular question. What was your motivation to come to USF? Thank you. Uh, yeah, to, to be honest, as I said, it was the curiosity that <clears throat> how the practices are here in, in terms of hospitality programs. I have quite experience in uh, Swiss uh, hospitality program. I worked in Dubai and uh, Cyprus and Turkey and Singapore. So I had quite a few experience on the, on the curriculum works and practical side of it, the design, quality assurance, and accreditation, and so forth. Uh, and I had connection, of course, with US, uh, with you and some other colleagues and schools, but I did not have uh, personal experience and, and depth knowledge of that. So I thought it would be a good opportunity for me to come and see the practices of here to see the similarities as well as the differences. Uh, in terms of hospitality programs, we find out some, although the nature is the same, but we find out different practices uh, in terms of the curriculum, in terms of the applications, the training, student body, uh, the practices and the facilities, the faculty body and so forth. <clears throat> so, here, uh, I'm trying to get out of these uh, from the U.S. perspective. At the end of the project uh, that I was I proposed, uh, I might come up with a maybe model uh, which is uh, uniform and unanimous to all around the world that are applicable uh, as far as accreditation and assurance are concerned. Uh, this is important because uh, the internationalization of higher education especially in hospitality, which is an international field, uh, that we, come, we may come up with such a uh, offer model that might help uh, to get aligned. Because we have a, a very uh, fast uh, movement of people from all around the world, whether it is uh, industry professionals, whether academic professionals, or uh, international student body. So this was the intention, and so far, uh, I, I, I wish I could say so far, so unfortunately, as we are experiencing all around the world, this coronavirus really kept us at home and uh, we are tied up. But thanks to technology and with these kind of opportunities, we are trying to uh, keep ourselves busy and, and keep continuing research and, and uh, networking. Uh, 
soon hopefully we'll get together and, and start working at the practical part of our research. And it's just okay, fine, yeah, thank you. Wonderful, thank you so much. Uh, Sedan, how about you, please? I'm gonna bring this uh, question one more time from Trishna. What factors motivated you to come to USF? Hey, I'm at the beginning level of my career, academic career. So I've been a assistant professor since 2017. And I really wanted to see the environment, working environment in a different country, especially in the US. Uh, I had chance to attend several classes with faculty members at the USF, like yours, your class, and uh, Dr. Trishna, Dr. Faisal, Dr. Pat's master classes. And I had experienced different way of teaching, which was really informative for me. The other motivation was uh, improving my language, especially academic language, because uh, back in Turkey, I have several, of course, research papers in English, on, uh, but mostly in Turkish. And I really wanted to learn how to write an academic paper in English. Uh, I've been here for almost six months. I believe that I am I am improving it. So because I'm working diff on different research papers with you, with Dr. Faiza, and uh, you are both of you are helping us very very much. And the um, the other motivation was to see different culture, the um, culture and work, uh, personal life uh, in the US and different tastes, different foods. So, uh, so far so good. Thank you so much. Wonderful, thank you. Thank you so much. And Gözde, how about you? Um, actually, when I started my master's degree, I heard that there was such a thing as postdoctorate. I wondered what it was. Uh, I searched and I met people who went abroad for this as I was in Skala. Uh, and what they said was very interesting to me. I believe that the um, profile of people around you directly affects your dreams, your goals, your um, curiosity. I was impressed by them, actually. Uh, during the, uh, my graduate education, uh, I met academics internationally known in international uh, congress I attended. Uh, I asked, what is this? What is this postdoctorate? What is uh, what does a uh, visiting scholar do? And I learned that this is possible for me too. Uh, they said that they can help me for this process. And my main motivation was to see what is going on in the USA about my field, what's going on in the world about my field. I wanted to be able to uh, meet people who are well known in the field in my area and chatting with them about my field, my project. And apart from this, I wanted to see the atmosphere of a different university and a different country, different culture. Wonderful. Thank you, Gözde. That's great. Uh, how about you, Fulgan? What's your motivation to come to USF and your experience so far, even though uh, you have been here for a short time? Yeah. Uh, thank you, Professor. And also, I would like to thank uh, Professor Trishna and greetings to her as well and the faculty. Um, being young, I happen to foresee my future to be very long lasting. And as such, in this in this world of intangible and tangible qualities, one needs to assert themselves well, as well as understanding what maturity really means. Not American scenery being one of the most maturated in terms of academical finesse and also research endeavors, I decided to come here right after my successful completion with my master's degree as well. And um, yes, once I ventured into that journey and I was lucky to get my position here, uh, my experience has been quite lovely because um, apart from my research responsibilities, here I get to see more form of an open environment for innovation. So that will be my short and humble opinion. Thank you. Thank you, Fukan. Gamza, how about you? What's your motivation? Yes, um, uh, my deepest motivation uh, to come here as a visiting scholar uh, was to have more academic experience and uh, different things. Uh, I experienced uh, 
daily routine, food culture, uh, differences in working life, differences in relationship. Uh, the, uh, these were the very things which are completely different from Turkey. Then there is the process of adapting yourself to these differences. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, I would like to talk about the project we are working with uh, Dear Ozuksek. It is possible to access to academic job posting, call for paper posting, and uh, call for conference posting from all over the world. The academic website, which is called academiacentrum.org, is being developed by Entry Center. Another thing uh, I have experienced is conducting a research about service robots in hospitality industry by me, Dr. Uh, dear Dr. Sedan, Dr. Jian, and my dear friend Aisha Akildas. Uh, now uh, we are working uh, in uh, another research project with Dr. Faiza. All of my experience. Thank you. Wonderful. Thank you. Also, uh, I would like to acknowledge uh, Dr. Faizan Ali, uh, Dr. Trishna Mystery, uh, also here that are working. I, I think they are working with most of all of the visiting scholars at the same time as well, too. We also have Dr. Adam Karmer uh, and Joe Askren, who got their PhD just recently. Uh, they are also happy to work with our visiting scholars, also graduate students as well, too. So, you know, I have stu uh, questions, but I would like to take the questions from the audience. I just want to bring this uh, question from Faizan Ali. Um, he is uh, asking for, uh, on behalf of Mr. Ehsan Khan, do we, have qual do we have to have qualifications for TOEFL and GRE to join as a postdoctoral scholar? I can answer this question quickly. Currently, uh, we don't have this requirement. So, but uh, for a visiting uh, postdoctoral scholar or visiting scholar, um, however, you need to um, show qualification that you speak English. Um, and for example, uh, Furkan, you uh, presented your IELTS score, right, as the proof. So that's yeah. one of the proofs. Yeah. What was your score in that one? Um, eight in speaking, seven seven for others. Those are quite high scores, but I think the university accepts six point five as the kind of proof yeah. that you speak English. For TOEFL is eighty. Yeah. Um, Gözde said, and uh, I think pretty much everybody else did an interview. But our university currently are thinking about um, administering a, a third party test for English. GRE we do not require, or GMAT would not require for this one. Uh, but it is definitely helps if you have it, if you would like to put that in there. Also, um, somebody, um, Aisha Good, also one of our graduate students, uh, we also send uh, regards to her as well. She's, she's asking, I'm going to answer these quickly. Uh, and if any of you would like to add something to what I'm saying, is that uh, please feel free. Here, uh, this I think is an important question here. She says, I have other scholar friends in Turkey who are also very qualified, just like the one that we have here, but cannot get a hosting institution to invite them, especially try to give hints. So maybe I turn this question to you, to, to you, the panel. Um, how do you get accepted or get this invitation? Obviously, you need an invitation, right? Each of you got an invitation from USF to invite you as a visiting scholar here. But what's the main component, for example, Sedan, how did you get to know me? I'm not saying me as a person, I don't want you to tell, you know, uh, but what was, for example, for each of you, maybe you can give some tips to people as opposed to sending an email to somebody you never met, you never know them, invite me as a visiting scholar. Is that a right approach or do you think that you should do other things? Sedan, maybe we'll start with you. Okay, thank you, Hojam. Uh, during my master's degree, while I was working in the hospitality industry at the same time, I was trying to find opportunities to meet researchers, to meet scholars. The great place to meet scholars like me are conferences. I was trying to attend conferences. Uh, while I was working in the industry, it was really hard because my workplace was not allowing me to go uh, other places 
Uh, I had chance uh, to attend conferences when I transferred to academia. And when I was working as a lecturer for four years at Abdamendi's University, I had many, many opportunities to attend conferences, international and national conferences. One of these conferences, I met you in person. Uh, but before that, I, while, I, while I was uh, working on my master's degree, I was trying to find a paper of yours. And I had no chance because I was uh, working in a travel agency and I, I didn't have access. I sent you an email. You didn't know me at that time. It was uh, 15 years ago. Uh, and I wrote you that I need that paper. I introduced myself first and I told you that I needed that paper. And you replied to my email and you attached uh, several other papers of yours. So. I met you in virtual uh, environment, but one of the conferences, I had chance to meet you. I had chance to explain myself more. Uh, and our uh, academic relationships, uh, academic, uh, academic relationship has improved. Uh, last year, I was, were, I was looking for uh, opportunities and we were talking to each other with you. And I was talking about Tibitak project, which was postdoctoral uh, scholarship. And I, I told you that I want to come to the US. And you said, eh, of course, you are more than welcome. And I started to write the project with uh, discussing you because uh, we are working in the same area with you, technology and hospitality. So I applied that scholarship. And my project proposal has been approved I have a full scholarship from my country. And after get, I get the approval, you send me the invitation. And with that paper and with approval from uh, my government, I applied to the visa and I'm here now. Thank you. Wonderful. Thank you. So, uh, Furkan, your story is a little bit different than Sedan. Again, we are talking about how did you come here and what do you need to do to get an acceptance or invitation letter from a U.S. university? Um, what? Tell me your story, please. Well, from a scholarly perspective, I have been keeping track of uh, North American scholars of the highest degree, including yourself. Having seen that there is an opportunity for M3 M3 scholars, I have seen their works, and they have done works by, for example, Katerina Bezerina, and so on and on. Um, with scholars like Faizan Ali and yourself. Tracking the regarded regarded topicalities and how we have a certain certain combination in that interest. I have had the fair chance of seeing you face to face uh, in our uh, faculty, uh, delivering an innovative speech, which then I have inquired quite a bit for. I was lucky to be to be accepted with my virtue. And while I'm being quite young and, uh, you know, high spirited, I was welcomed with such an approach. Um, I, t I talked briefly and effectively about what my research scope is. And then you went on to discuss about the tangible and intangible qualities that needs that is needed in academic environment. And to test the waters, I had my fair chance of showcasing my abilities in Istanbul conference. So from an adventurous perspective, <laughs> our, our communication and engagement took basically three countries uh, and three different environments to, to see what a junior scholar may be, which is a bit more critical and it, it requires a bit more attention than a senior scholar. Thank you. Wonderful. Thank you. As you can see in both of Sedan and Furkan's um, experience that the key is network you got a network and you don't have to do this physically. Uh, for example, for Furkan, as he said, I went to his university to give a lecture. You need to communicate with, with whoever that person. Sedan has been in communication with me for many years. Same thing with Gözde. Gözde and I met in person in Turkey in a conference uh, and then inter exchanged a lot of ideas. Same thing with Gamze and Professor Olga mm -hmm. Also, we know each other. So the, the, the answer to this question that person has asked um, that uh, I think Aishigil has brought it, let me bring this. The main thing is for you is to get network, uh, get to know the uh, you know scholars in other countries, whatever that might be, 
even if it is not just for invitation. Faizan Ali is uh, our star assistant professor uh, in, in our university, is also another great example. He, he actually was mainly, I wanted to recruit him here when I met him in 2013 in a conference in Thailand, in Bangkok, that uh, after short, you know, communication with him talking, I understood how smart, intelligent, bright person he was. And I wanted to recruit him as a visiting scholar. So we met in a conference and then he couldn't come to us as a visiting scholar for different reasons, but he came as a faculty member. So that's another, so network, network, network. And now in the age of this, it's so easy. You have the internet, you have YouTube, Facebook, social media, Instagram. You can communicate with these people as opposed to just out of the blue, asking one email and expect everybody to tell you that, oh, you're perfect. Okay, we want you here. So uh, we thank this Asha Gul for this question. I also have other questions uh, that I've prepared, but I just want to bring uh, what uh, um, Eda Volkan Avju has said from um, Turkey. We also send our greetings to Turkey from here. In these days when online education is common, maybe you will accept great, uh, guest students or researchers to your master's or PhD classes. This will be a great opportunity for those who don't have a chance to come to US. This is interesting because we just change our master's degree into online master's just recently. So in the near future, as of fall 2021, we'll be able to accept students from all around the world without coming to US to our master's program. But, you know, technically we have never tried hosting a visiting scholar online, but why not? I mean, this look at what we are doing right now. Currently we are all in Florida, but we could have as been in five or six different countries. There is no problem. Uh, currently, technology, Zoom, Skype, Microsoft Teams, Google Hangout or Meets or StreamYard in this particular example is giving us this opportunity. Definitely, it's a different opportunity. It wouldn't be the same, right, guys? I think you would agree with me that if you knew that we were only going to stay in the home, uh, that you would probably not want to come. Adam, would you like to come if you knew that Corona was going to impact you like this? Professor Olgan, what, what do you think? I mean, would you still come? <laughs> not, not at all. I mean, yeah, but you're right. I think the, the corona is the main issue, and it will open lots of the venue for, for people to go online, uh, whether it is teaching, whether it is the research, or even the scholars case, the project uh, jointly. Uh, yes, some colleagues were really good in that, and they were doing actively terrorism, but I realized the uh, almost for a month now, everyone, everyone is really uh, in, in the online world and trying to get to know how to make their classes online, how to participate in webinars and the panels and, and do some research collaboratively uh, via these tools that are available. Uh, so it's really pushing us towards that direction. Uh, I don't find any challenges and difficulties in this, that's fine, but personally, uh, both for teaching and learning as well as the online research i don't think it's it has to be the, the way that we have to follow strictly or or alone itself so i would never replace uh, the the i should call maybe hybrid uh, teaching or, or the blended learning uh, to online in the long run yes we have to survive in this time maybe this summer or maybe another semester or so but it cannot go forever and people need to really get back to the, as they call it, normal, and maybe that time they could be more productive and, and get uh, more uh, experiences. Uh, as uh, Gözde was saying, it's not only the uh, teaching and learning and research, but also the culture. Uh, one of the reasons why we are here is to, to feel uh, and sense the culture of the university, the culture of the country, and if you are doing uh, interdisciplinary uh, research, the culture of that field as well, because a psychologist has a different view than an executive chef of uh, maybe a, a, a hotel manager or, or a health professional, and uh, you name it. So it's a really multidisciplinary industry that we are working on. So we have to uh, sense all these. And the practical part of it, we should we have to we focus on that as well, cannot be done remotely or online uh, all the time. 
So these are the issues that uh, we are struggling. Uh, but yeah, the corona was really a, a surprise to all of us, so we have to cope with it. Yeah, Thank I know. You. Thank you. Thank you. Gersda, you uh, also came in December. So since right. you come, you had only a uh, few months before Corona. So right. what is um, your experience? If Would you come to America still if you know that you're going to stay in your home for 24-7? Oh, actually, all of the world has this coronavirus issue now. If I will be in Turkey now, uh, I will stay at home all the day. I mean, because all of the world has this coronavirus issue. Uh, okay, I'm not sure that I would come or I wouldn't come because it depends on the international flights also. But uh, if it just depends on my psychology, I would come, yes. And right. actually, uh, the biggest challenge I had after coming uh, in the US was trying to get used to a different culture. Right. And this challenge was to leave my daily routine that I am used to and set up a new life here. Good day. While you're answering this question, actually, I want to bring Errol's uh, question also too. He is okay. also asking about how would you explain working to us? What's the cultural differences? So please also answer this question since you already start talking about the culture. Okay. Uh, actually, okay. Um, as I said before, this challenge was to leave my daily routine that I used to, that I am used to in Turkey and set up a new life here. And it is enough to rent a furnished house and get an internet connection and a computer. That's enough physically, I mean. But it can take some time to get used to psychologically because it's a different culture. And the biggest thing that I've ever seen here is the culture is more informal here. Um, and more individual, actually. No matter how eagerly I came here, I am breaking my conf comfort area, actually, at least for a while. And we are all uh, do the same thing. Uh, but I believe that we should be able to get out of our comfort uh, zone. Sometimes give up the comfort area we get used to. My conditions were suitable for this, and I there and did it, and I'm so happy for this. Uh, is this is a challenge, but um, uh, how can I say bittersweet challenge? You know, so if I could do it again, uh, definitely I will do it again. Wonderful, great, thank you, Gözde. So um, you know, from the perspective of uh, cultural differences, uh -huh. Fukan, did you find anything um, between Cyprus and USA, or in other words, was Hollywood movies not enough? Like we watch a lot of movies, right? That cultural, you get, you think that you know what the life is in America, but how about you? I mean, Cyprus is different than Turkey, I, I would say. Maybe uh, you can speak to that. What do you think about this question as well? How was that cultural experience difference? Thank you for the question, Professor and Mr. Ersazen. Um, coming from Sunshine Island to Sunshine State um, wasn't entirely different as I expected. In fact, that was the cultural difference that I was explaining and further into my friends and family in that, in fact, Hollywood, Hollywood movies really make it look different. But in reality, the informality, the connections, you know, agreeableness and love for taking initiatives are all present in a much bigger pack in US as opposed to my island. And I would say that the main difference that I'm quite enjoying as a cultural difference is in fact the sense of success and positive stress. Here we have we are experiencing we are experiencing great things like positive word of mouth, experiencing a competitive yet friendly environment. You you get to see friends who are not rivals scholars that are scientists but they are not people of science. One small uh, um, point that I may want to add 
that may be a bit different in all countries like mine, where a focused uh, research team. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for coming. At least for yeah, me, no, no. your voice was chopped off a little bit. Yes. Okay, can I add a few things, oh. if you don't mind, about the cultural differences that I have experienced? Because I, I have worked on the cultural issues a little bit in different parts of the world. And personally, I'm very curious about those cultural communication and how things are set up. What I realize in the US is, when compared to uh, in our part of the world, Turkey, Cyprus, maybe Mediterranean or, or Middle East, you name it, uh, things are much more planned organized and, and formal when it comes to the work relationship, which is really good. I mean, we, we do in theory have all the planning and organizing of these budgeting things in, in our institutions, but when it, it comes to implementation, it doesn't really go as it was planned. So that's the uh, main differences. Uh, in terms of relationship between uh, people uh, within the organization or within the university in this case, it's much more informal friendly and, and cozy. I really like that everyone is cheering uh, themselves when they see each other, they, they do some uh, chit chats and uh, there's not much hierarchy between the people, whether academic or not academic, or student or professor. So that's the, the freedom or liberty or you name it. People really are feeling much more uh, comfortable in expressing themselves in terms of their ideas, in terms of their complaints and suggestions and criticism whatsoever. So that's the good thing about what I really liked here. Maybe that uh, should be the case in an academia where we can all from each other's ideas and suggestions, complaints and criticism. So it has to be open for that. So in the US culture, especially in, in the university that I have experienced is, is really good. I'm, I'm very happy. and. I think it's, it's positive in that respect. Thank you. Okay, perfect. Thank you. So let's move on. I have uh, one question for um, you, and not everybody has to uh, answer this because pretty much it's going to be the same. The question is, what were the steps that you had during the application process? The first one, we said that network, get to know the professor that you would like to ask the invitation letter. Once you are invited, what is next? Who wants to uh, answer this? Yeah, Sedan, please go ahead. Uh, tell us um, quickly about the steps that you had to do before you come here. Mm -hmm. uh, after I got uh, approval from the government, I mean the scientific foundation for my project, and I after received that invitation from uh, you from the USF, I had to apply to my university because I was working in a university in Turkey, and I had to have um, an approval from my university. That's why I wrote uh, an application first to my faculty and a faculty has discussed, faculty board has discussed my situation because I was coming here for one month, one year, which was 12 months and I had classes at my university. I had uh, six or seven classes uh, in the last semester so faculty board discussed my situation they said okay sedan can go to us for one year and that application has been sent to the uh, managerial uh, board of the university and they also discussed my situation and they approved after i got that approval from my university i prepared personal documents for scientific foundation to start my scholarship and after they approved all the documents, I mean, the scientific foundation approved all the documents, they started my scholarship and they bought my, they purchased my flight ticket to the US because uh, according to my agreements, project agreements, my flight tickets was, was also purchased by the foundation. And the arrival date has come and I came here on October 15th. Wonderful, thank you. Anybody else want to add anything to this process different than you know, for you? Uh, may I add something? Yeah, please. Um, as I know, Dr. Jihan, this process depends on the university that we that we want to uh, admit, right? Uh, so, uh, 
after we came here, as I know, this um, process has changed, right? I mean, if we are talking about the University of South Florida. Yes, yes. Anybody else? Gamze, how about you? Do you want to add anything? Yes, um, uh, I can talk about this topic. Um, we talked about the importance of the network before. Uh, then the official time is very important. Uh, I would like to explain about the, this uh, subject. Uh, the first official document was prepared by the University of South Florida for us, which is DS 2019. This is a uh, uh, period. Mm. Then it was necessary to apply to U.S. consulate uh, for visa with that document and other documents required by the consulate. After the visa process was completed, I started preparations, preparations for the flight. At first, I thought uh, I would have a hard time getting a visa, but it was easier than I thought. Um, I had experience um, of learning every process, including a visa procedure, procedures. This was uh, very useful. I want to edit this process. Oh, thank you. I appreciate it. Thank you so much. Very. Yeah. I mean, it takes some time, so it's not very simple, but but it's not very difficult either, as well. I want to just bring Faizan Ali's question. Uh, this is a great question. So he's uh, asking you based on your experiences. So you are here already, right? So everybody is for two months. Some of you are uh, longer than that. Uh, tell us one thing that you wish you knew before joining as a visiting scholar. Uh, it may help others. I agree with him, others who are planning. So think about what you know uh, today and you wish that you knew before. Like Gözde, you talked about physical things, right? Getting right. a rental, uh, internet connecting. So then you guys got furniture, right? You had to uh, look for other things. Uh, Furkan, same for you as well. So what is that? Uh, who wants to start? We can take one or two tip from each of you. Professor uh, Olin, you start with Yeah, I, thank you. I'll talk about two things. First one is Corona, which is, I think, same for all of us. Uh, but second thing, the uh, be honest, what is, the is I couldn't hear. I'm sorry. Corona. Oh, Corona. Yes. COVID-19. <laughs> For yes. all of us, I mean. Uh, but uh, the reality is, uh, life in the US is, is really uh, different and, and sometimes difficult for who are not really prepared for that. I would use the word patience. So here we experience to, to be patient because as, as by nature, we are not really so patient uh, people in our part of the world. Uh, here I realize that wherever I go, whatever I do, the procedures and so forth, uh, yes, things are very settled. Uh, it might be slow motion, but it's, it's uh, perfectly set and organized. So to the point, therefore, we have to be. Uh, we have to learn to be patient uh, when, when doing some practices here in the U.S. Thank you. Thank you. Anybody else want to answer this question? One thing that you wish you knew before you come. Yes, Sedan. The Bihan hocam, when I got the approval from the uh, foundation, I had chance to communicate different uh, scholars who have been in the US before, and they gave me several tips actually. For example, not to bring too much clothes, not to bring food, not to bring this, not to bring that, and be careful for a driving license, be careful this, be careful that. So I had many, many tips. That's why I will say this. If I knew that this experience that was really a helpful for my personal and academic life, I would think to apply master's degree in the US back really? in 2004. Yeah. I mean, uh, I wish I knew that. I mean, I wish I knew this experience before. Right. You know, this is important because for those of you who are watching this and thinking about that uh, using scholar versus a master's or even a doctoral degree, I have a video, if you go to chobalu.com, uh, we have done a panel 
and also uh, I've done a session in Turkish. The, the panel was in English, how to get a scholarship for master's and PhD in America. So feel free to watch that one, but you're right. Uh, you don't have to have money to do that. There are scholarships available in the master's and PhD level in America. Not everywhere, but there are quite a few of them. Uh, obviously, after Corona, it may be different now because the funding uh, may, may um, you know, be not as widely as uh, available. And anybody else want to add to that question? One thing that you knew, you wish you knew before you come? Driving license, we talked about it. Um, and okay, let me just take one more question then. I want to bring Adam uh, Carmer's question. Dr. Adam Carmer is also an assistant professor at University of South Korea in our school. Uh, so his question that what support may we provide you to during the quarantine and after the quarantine with regards to your experience in the USA along with the research collaboration. So anybody have any ideas? This is specific, right? Corona is not common. So we just come here. Um, with, is there anything that you think that we are doing? Obviously, even these panels are, in my opinion, supporting. It supports me. I mean, I'm learning stuff from other people. We are trying to do uh, panels, you know, sessions, just like this one. Is there anything else do you think that does the university can do for you or even for each other? I mean, what are the things that you do to support each other in this case, in this, during the times of Corona? Anybody want to take this question? Yes, Sedan and Fukan. Uh, thank you, Dr. Karmar, for your question. It's been a pleasure to be here with you. Uh, maybe we can organize uh, panels like this with faculty members and visiting scholars to discuss what kind of research can we conduct, what kind of collaboration can we do, maybe this kind of meetings can be arranged online because uh, during this coronavirus we don't have time to meet at what faculty in the building, but maybe we can meet online and discuss. Thank you. Thank you. Fukan, what was your uh, reply for this one, for this question? I would say that and uh, this is the first pandemic that we get to really digitally track people's um, behaviors and feelings and that we should be using the given stage and talk briefly and perhaps in detail at times about how we felt. Research scholars will continue to come to US as long as they deserve the position they have. And the experiences we have should not be in vain. Rather, they should be used to give a sense for future scholars to come. Along with that, a warm-up party would definitely be beneficial to really welcome us back and also, um, we need to maybe, well, people of my age need to understand that we are experiencing a psychological diet. We are staying away from people that we usually do. We are not able to hug. I mean, I'm a Mediterranean. We, we, we are warm-blooded to the core. So this may be highly considered once this is over. And, you know, free, fax, free, free hugs for all the medical, medical people out there as well, along with other scientists. We should cherish the scientists that we have rather than football players these days. Right, exactly. Thank you. And thank you, Furkan. And Dr. Uh, Dr. Pat Moria, who's our dean, has promised us that he is going to cook for us double once this corona is. I mean, he always invites people to his house anyway, uh, but he is eager. I mean, he hosts people in his home all the time. So uh, this is quite difficult for him as well. Um, very nice, thank you. Um, we lost uh, Professor Olgun, he is here. Probably has some internet connection. Probably yes, yes, internet connection. Yeah. Uh, welcome back. Uh, you are muted right now, uh, Professor Olgun. So if you want to unmute yourself. And I want to bring, meanwhile, another question. You know, I have questions, but there is quite a few questions from the audience, which I really appreciate. That makes it dynamic. So we've got about, uh, let's say, five to ten minutes uh, left. Any Sir Atabai? What opportunities have you encountered in the context of spirit of research in America? When you compare it to your home country, um, can you say that which example surprised you the most? Thank you. Uh, he's asking this. Anybody want to take this question? Um, I can. Gözde, let's start with you. Please. Uh, okay, if I have to evaluate in terms of education at the university, 
The biggest difference is in student profile and student professor communication. The communication, I mean, student between students and professors, this communication here is more, uh, how can I say, informal. In my country, this communication process is more formal, uh, but I know that there are some cultures that are even more formal than Turkey. Uh, and apart from that, I can add this. Uh, there is a different competition soul here. The more intense and more ambitious com com um, competition. Thank you. Thank you. Fukan, you want to add to this one? I think not American research world. I would don't even call it as little as academia welcomes being a gentle but bestial person when it comes to amount of resources that were thrown at me. I, I you know, you, you just say like, I need that software, done. I need that article, there you go. I need that idea, here you go, collaboration, you got it. So I think the spirit of US is you have to be hungry. You need to really understand and immerse yourself in research. This was also a point that I was talking when I was a bit of a cut due to internet connection. But that was really surprising to see how you are really motivated to do research. Yes, thank you. Thank you. Anybody else want to take that question? Uh, yes, Sedan. You are muted? Yeah. Yes, just one sentence. It was surprising to see tangible and intangible sources because we don't have those kind of sources, the same kind of sources back in Turkey at our universities. The tangible and intangible sources are here amazing, really helpful for our research process. Very nice. Thank you. And I want to ask you, there is more uh, comments. Let me just quickly. Uh, Michael Dylan Castle is a Turkish American scholar. Uh, he's saying that I would like to personally congratulate you, esteemed colleague, for a webinar, such an important issue. We thank him as well. Thanks for watching. And he's asking this question. My question would be on international cooperation. What would be the direct impacts of recruitment of visiting international scholars with regards to international cooperation? Anybody want to take this question? Normally, technically, we don't really do uh, or invite visiting scholars um, to us, and they are not all Turkish, by the way. So this currently, at the time being, uh, they happen to be from Turkey, but we have uh, Chinese visiting scholars, Mongolian, uh, Brazilian, Jean Tavares, uh, and uh, Professor Wu uh, from China, many, several uh, also. I've never actually talked about, thought about the impacts of recruitment, but I believe that, um, you know, if the students, for example, in EMU, uh, Furkan's university, were know that Furkan is in America and he's having a good experience, that they may want to think about USF as a destination. So um, I don't know, same thing for you, Sedan, Ondo Kuzma's university. Maybe you, the fact that you are here and you're giving these messages is going to give them confidence. Maybe I can do my master's in America. Maybe I can also go to America. So, but thanks for this question. I don't know if there is anything else you want to add uh, as well. Um, so, uh, Aisha Bash Collins also was one of the visiting scholars here uh, from Bilkent University. She is also a very good friend of mine. Uh, I also st spent almost two years in Bilkent University as a visiting scholar myself. So even though now I'm hosting, but I was a visiting scholar at Bilkan University, which I had wonderful experience there. That's where I met Aisha Bash Collins. And I also thank him. She came here, uh, spent uh, some time with us, but we are still working. Even today, uh, we are doing a paper. Um, also, um, there is a question from Yaya, but let me ask this question to everybody. What was the, uh, what, or what is the biggest challenge? that you had in the process so far is there if there is one thing that besides corona okay we all know that that's the biggest challenge if there was no corona was the food different that was a challenge for you um was it 
you know, finding a house, driving. Uh, Furkan in uh, Cyprus, they drive from the other side uh, than America. You don't have a car um, or maybe, you know, what is your thoughts about these challenges? Anybody want to take that question? Yes, Sedan, and then goes the next to you after that you. Please. I'm sorry, okay. but I kind of lost you, Professor. What's that? Fukan, what did you say? Sorry. The internet connection is not stable, Hojang. <clears throat> yes, yes. Okay, Sedan, please start. We'll get back to him then. I think. I was thinking. I was think before I come came here. I was thinking the uh, thinking the biggest challenge would be the cultural difference or cultural shock. But when I saw, uh, when I met faculty members and also master students, they are all over from the world. I mean, they are international. So I was thinking I was gonna feel like a stranger, like an alien, but I didn't. So the biggest challenge was food of course, because I'm a huge Turkish cuisine lover and I miss many, many things, many, many food, just like you, because I, I know that you love tea and simit, our simit in Turkey. I miss simit so much. I miss my mother's food so much. The biggest challenge was like eating, you know, because I'm, a, I'm an eating person. So for me, it's food. Gamze, do you agree with that? But you are yes. a good cook, right? You are a good cook. Yes. No, I'm not good. Yes. I'm preparing. I, I, I, am, I am so lucky. Oh, I really have good. a chef in my house. I have a personal chef in my house. She is cooking very well, but it's we not the same. Our roommates, right? They say yes. great. Anything else that challenge that you uh, said that, oh my God, this, this is so difficult for me? Uh, the, the, may I add something? Yeah, please. The biggest challenge is my comfort zone was for me. But as I said before, this challenge is a bittersweet challenge. So not a big problem. Thank you. Damla uh, will bring uh, Simit and tea to us. Don't worry, Damla. Is so Damla. Thank you, Damla. Thank you, Damla. <laughs> Thank you so much. Um, I, I need it. Professor, Professor Jihan, I'm sorry. I, I was disconnected for a while, and I think you were asking me a question. I actually, uh, you said something, but I couldn't hear you. That's why I asked you to repeat what you said. Oh, because you did mention something about Cyprus traffic and me not having yeah. a car here. Like, yes. Um, to add a little note, uh, the part of Cyprus, uh, except for capital, is quite rural. So when you're in, down in Florida and you have an opposite traffic, you are basically there, whether next to, this, next, to, next to the person or you are the driver saying, oh Lord, oh Lord, here we go, this is it, <laughs> mother mercy. Yeah, so that was really, really different. But I have to say something, apart from, uh, you know, research scholar Gamza being an amazing chef. Uh, is that is that we do have access to certain certain Mediterranean cuisines, unlike Turkish restaurants, which was a bit of my blessing. And also, uh, Dr. Gözdez was there also make quite a nice uh, dishes too from here and there, especially from my region, which was quite shocking uh, for me. And you know, I, I have to thank to my mom at this point. <laughs> well, th thank you, mom. Dr. Sedan is a fantastic, fantastic person when it comes to showing Turkish hospitality. And well, do I need to say anything about Dr. Olgan Cicek? We all know. I mean, uh, my, my pleasure, my pleasure. Well, I do miss Ahmad though. Yes, <laughs> I know. I think yeah, maybe can I add something? After else? coronavirus. Yeah. Uh, thank you. Yes, please. Uh, yeah, I think uh, I, I share the uh, feelings of my colleagues, uh, but, you know, I have a saying, I use this since long time when it's international issues. When in Rome, do what Romans do. So we are not here forever. So we are here for a certain, of a certain period of time. And it's really good sometimes to try the local culture, local food and experiences as well. That's one of the exchange and beauties of this kind of uh, visit. Uh, so I try to, uh, me and my wife, we try to take the advantage of this year to experience the uh, new tastes as well as new uh, cuisines and, and different types of 
uh, experiences here, including the traffic, as for said, it was the same for me. But uh, we, are, we are always uh, fighting with the challenges, and, and that we are all coming. Uh, after one month, I think, I, I managed to get the Florida driving license, and we traveled all around, and so now it's really getting much more convenient. So all the time you adapt yourself and you get used to things, how it's moving here. And you take the good ones that are fit to you and you live happy. And if there are some challenges, you know that it's not forever. or It's not uh, only for you, it's for everyone. You have to respect the differences as well. So we are coping well in that respect. Thank you. Thank you. So I would like to tell Stamla a suggestion. Instead of bringing Simit to us, why don't you go to a Simit uh, place, learn how to make Simit? That would be great. Um, that would be great. <laughs> yeah, that would be good. Okay, I'm going to take the last question from Emel Adamush. She is a dear professor in Turkey also. She is asking, after your experiences, what will you bring back to your home country? As an academic person uh, or lecturer, do you think, what will change in your environment? In other words, after you come back, what is so what? What's going to happen in your opinion? Anybody want to take this question? Yes, goes there. And for um, I really want to support everyone in Turkey to go to abroad for a while because this is really different experience. Thank you, Furkan. Yes, for you. For the youth that are in my age group, uh, early twenties to stop being lazy, to immerse academia and do something that will actually contribute to your future rather than being sorry. And all other beautiful qualitative and conceptual things I have learned. Great, thank you. Anybody else want to add to this? Sedan, yes, please. I will completely change the way I, take, uh, the way I teach uh, uh, based on my experience here. And also, I will completely change my point of view uh, towards research because I learned a lot from you, from other uh, faculty members. I am thankful for that. So uh, for my country, I will product many, many research. I will be a well-known professor in the future. Uh, thanks to my experience here. Thanks to you. Thank you. Thank you, of course. Uh, said and thank you. Damla uh, replied to us. She's listening to us. She said she will learn how to make simit. She knows how to make pishi and burek. Uh, and uh, you know, and simit, which Damla, is so, we love you. Yeah, and then yes. I was very, very thin. I wanted to gain some weight, so that will help me. <laughs> very, very good. Uh, I would like to thank all of you who listened. Uh, this has been a wonderful panel. Um, if you are um, from Turkey, we are going to continue this session in Turkish for about five, 10, 15 minutes if you want to ask any questions. So those of you who are non-Turkish speakers, we thank you. And I also would like to thank all of my panelists here for being in the panel also, of course, as they are for their contributions to the University of South Florida and M3 Center. Herkese teşekkür ederim. Bu arada dinleyenler varsa Türkçe'ye dönebiliriz. Türkçe Soru sormak isterseniz bir 5-10 dakika, 15 dakika e, dilerseniz buna dönebiliriz. Ben hemen bir soru sorayım. E, e, Erol, biz de sana teşekkür ederiz. E, sizlere arkadaşlar Türkçe için bir soru sorayım. Mesela Gamze, e, Türkiye ile Amerika'yı karşılaştırdığında e, böyle sana çok çarpıcı gelen bir değişiklik var mı? Yani hocam yemeklerden bahsetmiştik. Yani salatalığın domatesin tadı bile çok farklı Türkiye'dekinden. Ee, evet. Onu bile hani aynen memleketim diyorum, alam diyorum, özledim diyorum, anne yemekleri diyorum. Ee, evet. Burada hamur yaptığımda bile kabarmıyor hocam. Kabartma tozu aynı ama kabarmıyor falan. Onun yani, dışında yemekler <gülüyor> tamam farklı. Yani. Yemekler dışında hocam e, burada eğitim, dersler çok farklı Türkiye'dekinden. Ve çalışma yöntemleri çok farklı. Hani hocalarla ve hocaların deney, geçmiş background'daki deneyimlerini e, o hocalarla de, e, deneyimlemek çok farklı bir e, süreç oldu benim için. Ha, şok olmakla birlikte hani güzel bir şok oldu ve Kısa sürede hani bunları öğrenme peşine düştük. Burada gerçekten hani Gözde Hocam'ın dediği gibi konfor alanımızı bırakıp gelme 
düşüncesindeydik. Ve e, bu benim düşüncem tabii. Bu konfor alanını bırakıp gelmek ve sürekli çalışma durumu beni çok sevindiriyor. Çünkü geri döndüğümde hani burada e, akademik anlamda dolgun biri olarak döneceğim. Ve bu beni çok mutlu ediyor. Zorluklar var elbet. Türkiye ile kıyasladığımız zaman dediğim gibi hani e, kişisel olsun, akademik olsun bazı zorlukları yaşıyoruz ama döndükten sonra e, eminim bunlar bize çok çok e, artı deneyim olarak kalacak. Yani o zorlukları düşünmeyeceğiz bile öğrendiklerimizden e, sonra. Aynen doğru. Başka eklemek isteyen var mı? Bu e, tecrübeyi burada Furkan senin için Türkçe olarak alalım. <gülüyor> Tabii elimden geleni yapayım. Um, <gülüyor> Kıbrıs'ta olduğum için tabii ki konuşma şekli biraz değişik olabilir. Onun için özür dileyeceğim hepinizden. Ee, gençler olarak e, bizim bizim artık değişmemiz, dijital dünyaya ve araştırmalara e, girişmemiz lazım. Bu müşkül pesentlik, bu e, anne baba sıcaklığı ve böyle her şeyin bize elimize hazır verilmesi hamır çocuğu dedik biz, bizim, bizim orada e, olmaz. Amerika'ya geldiğiniz zaman ben ne demek istediğimi çok iyi anlayacaksınız. Burada bir yetişkin olunması, olunması, burada anlayışlı olunması gerekiyor. Burada yaş bazlı değil, kişi, karakter, tutum ve her şeyden önemlisi sevgi ve saygı çerçevesinde gelişen bir ilişki olduğunu unutmayalım. Buranın evimiz evimizden farklı olabileceğini ve buradaki insanlara saygılı olduğumuz sürece onların bizi sevgine yaklaşacağını, yaklaşacağını unutmayalım. Bir de Kıbrıs'ta görürseniz konuşmayı unutmayalım. Çünkü biz çok azız. Yani bize sahip çıkın <gülüyor> yurt dışında. Ee, bunun dışında söyleyecek bir şeyim yok. <gülüyor> ee, Eda Volkan Avcı, Seden sana bir mesajı var. Geldiğinde deneyimlerini paylaşmanı çok isteriz. Özellikle eğitim yöntemleri ve araştırma konusunda diyor. Sen, değil mi? Seve seve zaten bunu yapacağını söylemiş. <gülüyor> Kesinlikle, kesinlikle. Çünkü benim buraya gelirken ki hedefim sadece kendim için bir şeyler kazanmak değil. Burada öğrendiklerimi döndüğümde olabildiğince çok insana aktarmaktı. Döndüğümde mutlaka yapacağım. Seve seve. 19 Mayıs Üniversitesi çok şanslı sana sahip olduğu için. Çok sağ olun. Teşekkür ederim. Çok sağ olun. Gözde senin e, buradaki yaşan sen yeni gel. Hani bir hikaye oldu. E, yine tekrar ediyorum. Yani koronayı bir şeyine almayarak, gözünü evet. almayarak. Evet. Şu ana kadar tecrübelerini nasıl değerlendiriyorsun? <gülüyor> Derslere girdiğin az bir şey de olsa değil mi? Son zamanlarda bir iki ay kadar falan. Yok Aslında de, geldiğinden de. beri takip ediyoruz insan sustu dersleri. Tamam. tamam. Nasıl mesela ders konusunda Türkiye'de fark var mı? Sen Türkiye'de doktoranın da lisa, <gülüyor> yüksek lisansını da Türkiye'de yaptın. Burayla orayla karşılaştığında nasıl gibi farklar görüyorsun? Yani çok sık düşünüyorum ben bunu. Her bura, her derse girdiğim zaman dersten sonra her, her seferinde bunu düşündüğüm, düşündüğüm bir konu bu. Yani benzerlikler de var. Örneğin kullanılan ders malzemeleri benzer malzemeleri biz de kullanıyoruz. Ama benim için en farklı olan şey dediğim gibi öğrenciler ve hocalar arasındaki iletişim her an her ortamda, her platformda iletişim kurulabiliyor. Yani bunun için öncesinde bir program yapalım işte ofis saatleri ne bağlı kalalım yani böyle bir şart yok. Kantinde hoca ile öğrenci karşılaştığında bile yaküstü bir şeyler konuşabiliyor. Daha informal bir iletişim var. Ee, daha yoğun bir çalışma temposu var kesinlikle. Daha dolu bir çalışma temposu var. Bu tabii ki biraz kültürden ve e, çalışma şartlarından da kaynaklı. E, rekabet odaklı olunması için daha iyi işler yapabilmek için, daha iyi yerlerde olabilmek için sürekli burada bir çalışmak gerekiyor. Kendini geliştirmek gerekiyor. Yani şey değil, ben artık bu aşamaya vardım. Bundan sonrasında çok uğraşmasam da olur diyebileceğimiz bir nokta burada yok. Hiç kimse de yok. Yani e, profesör olmuş insanlarda dahi yok. Bu benim en çok dikkatimi çeken şey oldu. Dolayısıyla sürekli çalışmak, sürekli üretmek, sürekli güncel olmak, yeniliği takip etmek. Örneğin burada öğrencilerin hocalarla ilgili değerlendirmeleri ve görüşleri çok önemli. Dolayısıyla Dersi veren hocanın kendini geliştirmesi, güncel teknolojileri kullanması, öğrenci dönüklerine dikkate alması, onları memnun etmeye çalışması burada çok daha önemli bir konu, daha etkili bir unsur. Teşekkür ederim. Şimdi tekrar olacak demin İngilizce'de ama belki bu yayını sadece Türkçe kısmında ayırırız daha sonra YouTube'da. 
E, o yüzden sorayım. Şimdi e, sizler özellikle bu soru çok sorulacak. Yani demin e, Ayşegül de sanırım buna bahsetmişti. Biz nasıl e, scholar olmak için gidebiliriz? Yani İngilizce olarak bunu bahsettiniz ama bu konuda birkaç yine e, bizi Türkiye'den dinleyen akademisyenler ya ben de Amerika'ya gideyim orada bir yıl kalayım e, postdoc yapayım işte araştırma yapayım Hı-hı. ders nasıl veriliyormuş göreyim ben de ders vereyim gerekirse olursa diyenler için tavsiyeleriniz ne olabilir? Hocam ben bir şey ekleyebilir miyim? Az önce İngilizce olarak Sedan hocam bahsetti. Benim şöyle bir farklılığım var. Sedan hocam Türkiye'de 19 Mayıs Üniversitesi'nde çalıştığı için o üniversiteden izin alma süreci de var. Benim e, üniversite, Türkiye'de bağlı olduğum bir üniversite olmadığı için sadece o noktada bir farklılığımız var. Kısaca dile getirecek olursam öncelikli olarak ben buraya gelebilmek için e, doktoramı tamamlamam gerekti. Sizinle bu konuyu ilk konuştuğumuzda doktoramı tamamlamam gerektiğini söylemiştiniz. Dolayısıyla doktoramı tamamladıktan sonra e, buraya gelebilmek için bir e, burada yaşam sürdürebilmek için bir finansman sağlamak lazım. Bu Kişi kendi kendini finanse edebilir, kendi imkanlarıyla gelebilir ya da bir bursa başvurabilir. Ben buraya ilk geldiğim zaman kendi imkanlarımla gelmeye göze alarak geldim. Kendimi finanse etmeyi. Geldikten sonra bir burs kazandığımı öğrendim TÜBİTAK'tan. Projemin desteklendiğini öğrendim. Dolayısıyla bu şekilde finanse edeceğim kendimi. Bunun dışında bu üniversitede ben başvurduğum zaman Güney Florida Üniversitesi'ne İngilizce dil yeterliliğimizi ispatlamamız istendi. Bunun iki yolu vardı. TOEFL ya da IELTS kabul ediliyordu yanlış hatırlamıyorsam. Eğer bu sınavlara girmemişsek, bunlarla ilgili bir notumuz, puanımız yoksa iki tane fakülte üyesiyle, hocayla mülakat yapıp İngilizce bildiğimizi ispatlamamız istiyordu. Ben ikinci yolu seçtim. O zaman bir sınav notum olmadığı için. Bu belgelerimi sağladıktan sonra, yani doktora diplomam, sınav geçerliliğim ve kendimi finanse edebildiğimi ispatladıktan sonra ya da bursum olduğunu ispatladıktan sonra ee, Güney Florida Üniversitesi'ndeki resmi yazışma süreçleri başladı ve benim bu sürece başvurmamla buraya gelmem arasında yaklaşık iki buçuk üç ay var. Planlama yapmak isteyenlere hani ona göre bir yol çizim, çizebilmeleri açısından söylüyorum. Ama dediğim gibi benim izin almak zorunda olduğum bir üniversitem yoktu. Ee, Sedan Hocam gibi izin almanız gereken bir üniversite varsa burada tabii ki bir de üniversitenin kendi içindeki yazışma ve izin süreçleri var. Bunlar daha da Vakit alacak işler. Dolayısıyla daha erkenden plan yapmak gerekebilir. Son olarak da zannediyorum Cihan Hocam biz buraya geldikten sonra e, üniversiteye, University of South Florida'ya visiting scholar olarak gelme süreci değişti zannediyorum. O yüzden o güncel bilgi sizde var. Biraz değişti çünkü bizim e, fakültemiz başka bir fakülteye bağlanıyor. <gülüyor> Tampa'da bizim okulumuzun e, değişik kampüsleri eskiden ayrı ayrıydı. Şimdi bir olduğu için tam aslında belli de değil. Ee, nasıl oldu. Ama o konuda ilgilenenler varsa onlara e, bilgi vermekten ben mutlu olurum. Peki Seden sana e, gözlerin şu anlattığı şeylerin bir öncesine gidelim. Yani buraya gelmek o, o, o official olarak hani resmi o davetiye mektubunu almadan önce sen şimdi senin biz seninle tanıştık. Onun dışında mesela Türkiye'deki bir akademisyen ya ben Amerika'ya gideyim dese ne yapması lazım ilk olarak? Yani kalkıp Herkese bir e-mail mi atsın bütün hocalar Amerika'daki beni alın diye mi atsın e, ya da ilk önce TÜBİTAK'a mı başvursun ya da ne bileyim Gözde gibi ya benim kendi kişisel bankamda bu kadar para var tamam ben kendimi yaparım. Ne diyorsun bu konuda yani tekrar kendi dediğimin değil de başka hmm. o dediğim olanlar ne yapmalı bir hmm. hocadan kabul alabilmek için Amerika'da? Hocam bir takı başvurmak için çoktan bir üniversiteyle görüşmüş, bir üniversiteden hocayla anlaşmış, proje danışmanı olarak onun onayını almış ve ondan bir davetiye almış olmamız gerekiyor. TÜBİTAK'a aksi takdirde başvuramıyoruz. Gerekli evraklardan bir numaralı evrak bu yani. Bu proje... daveti nasıl alıyoruz peki? Bu daveti almak için de çalışma alanınızla alakalı hocalarla görüşmeniz lazım. Mesela ben teknoloji konusunda çalıştığım için teknoloji alanında yurt dışında çalışan hocalarla iletişim kurmam gerekiyor. Tabii bu ben çok şanslıyım. Burada siz vardınız ama siz olmasaydınız da benim alanımda uzman, e, benim projemin danışmanlığını yapacak insanlarla iletişime geçmem gerekirdi. Şimdi internet ortamında 
Evet konferanslarda network yapalım, tanışalım ama uluslararası konferanslara gidemiyoruz çok fazla. Bu noktada da ben sosyal medyanın çok önemli olduğunu düşünüyorum. Bizi şu anda izleyen özellikle genç kardeşlerime de bir tavsiyede bulunmak istiyorum. Narciz Hanım müsaade ederseniz sosyal medyayı sadece eğlence amaçlı kullanmasınlar. Yani Instagram, Snapchat, Facebook bilmem ne bunları sadece oyun, inter, e, eğlence, arkadaş bulma amaçlı kullanmasınlar. Artı o kadar farklı bir dünyada yaşıyoruz ki kişiler arası rekabet bile çok güçlü. Ve evet. bu artık genç arkadaşlarım ileride mezun olacaklar ya akademiye devam edecekler ya iş hayatına girecekler. Bir şekilde kendilerini diğer rakiplerinden ayırmaları gerekiyor. E şimdi iş başvurularında artık sosyal medya hesaplarına bakılıyor. Bunu siz de biliyorsunuz. Dolayısıyla sosyal medya artık profesyonel anlamda kullanmaya başlasınlar. Çünkü sosyal medyadaki paylaşımlarınızla varsınız. Mesela ben sizinle, siz beni hiç tanımayan bir insan olsanız ben sizinle iletişime geçip hocam ben böyle böyle biriyim, şu alanda çalışıyorum, sizinle çalışmak istiyorum, post doktor için yanınıza gelmek istiyorum dediğinde sizin yapacağınız ilk şey ne? Google, Seden Doğan kimdir? Orada çat, benimle ilgili sonuçlar çıkıyor. İnanın şu anda yazın, akademik çalışmalarımdan önce sosyal medya paylaşımlarım karşınıza çıkacaktır. Eski o sosyal medya paylaşımlarıma göre beni tanımayan biri olarak benim hakkımda bir değerlendirme yapacaksınız. Bu noktada da böyle bir tavsiyede bulunmak istiyorum. Çok önemli. Evet. Ben size gelirken e, bir hocam aracılığıyla e, şey yaptım. <gülüyor> Sen nasıl mesela tavsiye ediyorsun. Sosyal medya Sedin hocamızın söylediklerine katılıyor musun? Yani ya da mesela kimseyi tanımıyorsan hocalarına mı sormak lazım? Eski hocalarına ya hocam Amerika'dan, Almanya'dan nereye gitmek istiyorsanız illa Amerika değil. Ee, bir tanıdığınız var mı? Beni tanıştırabilir misiniz? gibi e, mi yaptın sen? Nasıl bir, bu konuda bilgi verir misin? Yani hocam ben de Sedan hocama katılıyorum. E, network çok önemli. E, ya da network'ünüz yoksa e, kendi hocalarınızla, iletişimde olduğunuz hocalarınıza, da, hocalarınıza danışabiliriz. Çünkü onlar en iyi yönlendirici olabilir. Hani sizi tanıyan, çalışma alanlarınızı bilen, ilgi alanlarınızı bilen hocalara danışabiliriz. E, onun dışında hocam ben tezimi sosyal medya üzerine yazmıştım. Yüksek lisans tezimi. Sosyal medya bağımlılığı üzerine. Sedan hocama bu konuda %100 katılıyorum. Artık e, yani yüz yıl sadece e, yüz yüze görüşmek değil de e, biliyorsunuz e, networkleri e, internet ortamında kullanmak çok önemli olacak e, ileriki e, dönemlerde. Ki e, atıyorum e, tamam eğlence amaçlı kullanıyoruz e, sosyal medya ama gerçek anlamda da e, var olabilme, orada var olabilmeyi göstermek adına çalışma alanımızı da göstermeliyiz hani eğlencenin dışında. Ve artık var olabilmek, gerçek hayatta var olabilmenin artı yanına internet ortamında da, teknoloji anlamında da var ol, biz buradayız e, hızı göstermemiz gerekiyor. Ki böylece hani hem yeni yüzyıla ayak uydurmuş oluruz hem de kendimizi daha net ve e, net bir şekilde e, gösterebiliriz. Yani yüzde yüz katılıyorum bu durumu. Teşekkür ederim. E, Erol Sözen e, bize yazmış. Onun son sorusuyla kapatalım artık. Çünkü zamanımızda geçtik. Bu arada Erol'a da sevgilerimizi gönderiyor. Sağ olsun bizi kendisi Auburn, Alabama'da güzel ağırladı. Bir evet. ay korona Çok öncesi. Çok teşekkür olarak. ederiz her şey için. Hiç unutamayız. Evet. Erol hocam. Ve, e, belki birkaç tane de buradan arkadaşımız kendisine katılabilir orada. Doktor Anis olarak inşallah umuyoruz. E, demiş ki yeni sisteme kolay geçiş nasıl yapılabilir gelenler için? Araştırmayı mı asılmak gerekli? Ee, ekstra dersler mi almak, network mu, üniversiteden e, farklı fakülteden hocalar itibar mı? Yani geldikten sonra soruyor. Ne dersin? Yoksa all of the above. Yani hepsi mi acaba? Bu soruya cevap vermek isteyen. Hocam bir şey söyleyebilir miyim? Tamam tabii. Bu sorunun hemen üzerinde başka bir yorumunu gördüm ben Erol hocamın. Demiş Aa, ki kısa süreli gelen arkadaşlar ne yapmalı? Bu süreci de iyi değerlendirebilmek adına. Zannediyorum iki soru bağlantılı. İki, Dolayısıyla... Kısa süreli gelen arkadaşların zaman kaybetmemesi gerekiyor. Bu yeni sisteme en kolay geçişi nasıl yapabilir gelenler? Ee, Var mı? Dolayısıyla yani, yani ben şunu söyleyebilirim. Örneğin ben buraya sizinle buraya gelmek için e, proje yazarken ve bu süreçte sizinle iletişim kurarken niyetim vardı benim buraya gelmek. 
burada e, yani şu yapılabilir örneğin e, internet sayfasına gideceğiniz üniversitedeki gidilecek olan fakültedeki hocaların sosyal medya hesaplarını takip ederek onlarla iletişim kurarak buraya gelmeden önce bazı e, makale projelerine başlamak en azından fikir oluşturmak belki zaman kazandırabilir geldikten sonra e, bu fikir sürecini elimine etmiş oluruz. Bir adım atmış 2-0 önde ya da 3-0 önde başlamış oluruz bu süreci. Dolayısıyla erkenden harekete geçmekte fayda var diye düşünüyorum. Bunun dışında tabii ki olabildiğince network edinmek, olabildiğince kongrelere katılmak. Kongrelere katılamıyorsak bile Sedan Hocam'ın dediği gibi sosyal medyayı çok aktif kullanarak e, daha görünür olmak Proaktif olmak gerekiyor. Evet doğru. Şimdi Olga Hocam son olarak size bir şey sorayım. Şimdi siz yıl, e, çok tecrübeli bir akademisyensiniz. Profesörsünüz. Kıbrıs'taki e, Yüksek Öğrenim Kurumu'nun da üyelerinden bir tanesisiniz. Ama ben sizi burada e, bizim derslerimize misafir olarak katıldığınızı görüyorum. Yani siz Dubai'de dünyanın değişik yerlerinde hem ders vermiş hem yöneticilik yapmış bir insansınız. Merakım mesela bu Erol'un sorusuyla ilgili olarak Niçin? Yani bu kadar çok şey tecrübeniz olmasına rağmen niye e, hala mesela aktif olarak katılıyorsunuz? E, bütün etkinliklere, derslere de girdiğinizi görüyorum. Bunun sebebi nedir? Yani ya mesela ben arkadaş her şeyi biliyorum. Dubai'yi de biliyorum, Amerika'yı da biliyorum. Benim bir şey e, görmeme gerek yok demiyorsunuz da tekrar bunları yapıyorsunuz. Sebebi nedir? Eyvallah. Çok sağ ol Cihan Hocam. Yani güzel bir noktaya değindin. En azından... Ee, bizi izleyen e, genç arkadaşlara, buradaki çalışma arkadaşlarımıza da e, bir nebze bir katkısı olursa çok sevinirim. Tabii ki biz yaş ilerledikçe tecrübenin ne olduğunu ve önemini anlıyoruz. Ee, bize de zamanla söylediklerinde belki bir şey ifade etmiyor ama 5 yıl, 10 yıl, 20 yıl geçtikten sonra e, onu yerine oturtabiliyoruz. Dolayısıyla ben bu şekilde bakmalarını rica ediyorum arkadaşlardan. Yani bunu bir bilgelik, bir ukalalık, bir e, çok bilmişlik gibi lütfen algılamasınlar. Biz de eskiden öyle yapardık belki hocalarımıza ya da büyüklerimize, ailemize falan. E, tabii şu da bir gerçek ki artık dünya değişiyor. Hele ki bu e, süreçten sonra, yeni girdiğimiz süreçten sonra e, Gamze'nin de dediği gibi artık yeni yüzyılda her şey dijitalleşip e, bilinen değerler ya da yöntemler de değişecek gibi gözüküyor. Haklı olmak lazım. E, haklısın hocam. Ben e, 27. Yıl, 28. yıl 92 Doğucu olarak başladım. Eylül'de. Yani gerçekten ben de kendime dönüp baktığımda sağ olun. E, ama işte akademiye bizi biraz genç ve değiş tutuyor e, sanırım. İçimizdeki bu e, ruh sürekli araştırma, sürekli yenileme, gelişme. E, bende de hep bir öğrenme isteği oldu. Ee, bunu Cihan Hocam'la da görüyorum. Yani zaten o da bizi belki de bağladı ve bir araya getirdi. Ee, sürekli bir şeyler üretmek e, ya da katkı koymak ya da öğrenmeye çalışmak bizim mesleğimizin de bir gereği. E, çünkü bilgi şu anda çok kolay ve her yerde var. Big Data'dan bahsediyoruz. Sınırsız, sonsuz bilgi. O yüzden her şeyi biliyorum dememiz kesinlikle mümkün değil. Bilmemiz de gerekmiyor ama e, başta bir güzel bir şey söylemişti hocam. Bizim belli bir alanda uzmanlaşmamız lazım. Ben yeni e, genç akademisyen arkadaşlar olarak Ben de belki bir 15-20 yıldan sonra kendimi belli bir niş alanda bulmaya çalıştım. Biz turizmciler dediğim gibi multidisipliner olduğu için her şeyden biraz biraz bilmek zorundayız ya da biliriz. Ama bir şeyi çok iyi bilmek ve uzmanlaşmak daha önemli oldu inanıyorum. Mesela ben kendi açımdan son 6 yılda veya son 10 yıl e, akreditasyon ve kalite güvence alanına yöneldim. Bu sadece turizmle de sınırlı kalmadı. İşletme ve diğer alanlar, sosyal bilimlere de geçti. Orada biraz kendime daha yakın buldum ve oradan e, ilerlemeye çalıştım. Bulunduğum kurumda buna e, destek sağladım. Dolayısıyla bizdeki en büyük sıkıntı belki de arkadaşların kendi e, yeteneklerine, bilgi, tecrübe ve hedeflerine göre uzmanlık alanlarını belirleyip o alanda derinlemesine ilerlemeleri. Artık kendi alanımızda kalmamız yetmiyor arkadaşlar. Gerçekten dünyaya açık olmamız lazım. Ben e, dediği gibi her tarafta bulunduğum e, işbirlikleri yaptım, çalışmalar yürüttüm, dersler verdim. E, ama gördüm ki günün sonunda her yerde herkes aynı amaç ve aynı e, doğrultuda çalışıyor. Bizim akademiyanın yüzü aynı. E, bence odaklı olmak, araştırma odaklı olmak e, ve e, network bağlantılarını e, kullanmak. Çünkü her şeyi kendimiz de keşfedemeyiz. Bakın Amerika birçok şeyi keşfetmiş. O yüzden biz de e, bundan faydalanmalıyız e, düşüncesiyle. Ben e, 
Burada da e, hala daha her gün bir şeyler öğrendiğimi hem arkadaşlardan hem buradaki ortamdan hem de network'te bulunduğum bütün dünyadaki çalışma arkadaşlarımızdan özellikle son bir ayda ben belki son altı ayda yaptığımdan daha çok e, webinar ve e, toplantılar panelleri izledim ve daha çok şey öğrenme şansı buldum. E, sürekli bunu canlı tutmamız gerektiğine inanıyorum. E, bir de şey not almıştım bunu sonunda paylaşayım diye ama bu bir mindset yani düşünce yapısı. Biz bir akademik düşünce yapısını oluşturmamız lazım. Bunun sorumluluk ve bilinciyle de sürekli kendimizi geliştirmemiz lazım diye düşünüyorum. Teşekkür ederim hocam. Ben teşekkür ederim. Çok sağ olun. Son olarak eklemek istediğiniz bir şey var mı? Kapatıyoruz artık. Furkan Seden. Ben, ben değilim. Furkan lütfen seni alalım. Peki. E, hocam kusura bakmayın hemen şey bitireceğim. E, yapacağım yorum kesinlikle ve kesinlikle yaş grubuma aittir. E, onun için arkadaşlar olarak söyleyeceğim. Hiçbir şekilde bu yorumun değerli profesörlere veya doktorasını bitirmiş insanlara e, ait olmamalıdır. Onlar tarafınca e, üstlerine alınmamalıdırlar. Bizler e, enteresan bir jenerasyonuz. Her şeyi bildiğimizi ve her şeyi bileceğimizi düşünen ansiklopediler gibi dolaşıyoruz. Lütfen cep telefonunuzdaki Google Google'daki bilgilerin beyninize hemen upload olacağını düşünmeyin. Usta çırak ilişkisinin lütfen keyfine ve önemine dikkat edin. Bunun dışında bu uzun süreçte sizin mesleğiniz olacak şey konseptleri ve farklı düşünceyi başkalarını anlayabileceği ve algılayabileceği formda sunmak olduğunu unutmayın. Rumi'nin Rumi'nin çok güzel bir sözü var. Biz Kıbrıslılar çok severiz. Nice nice insanlar gördük ki üstlerinde elbise yok, nice güzel elbiseler gördük içinde insan yok. Belki de bu sözün akademideki yeri daha da ileriye çıkmalıdır. Çünkü biz Doktor of Philosophy veya bu konularda sosyal bilimlerde çalışan insanlarız. İnsanı anlama sanatını Tıpkı e, Olgun Hocam'ın söylediği gibi alanımıza özgü bilgi, bilgiler edinmekle beraber anlamamız gerekir. Buna Amerikalılar çok güzel bir isim vermiş. Intangible quality demiş. Lütfen bu elzemiyeti ben kendi yaş grubundan rica ediyorum. Algılayalım. Jenerasyonlar arasındaki saygıyı ve sevgiyi unutmayalım. Nasıl ki onlar bizi yetiştirdi. Zamanı geldiğinde biz de başkanını yetiştireceğiz. Onların anneleri ve babaları gibi olacağız. Bunun için ilk önce evlat olmayı öğrenmemiz lazım. Teşekkür ederim. Teşekkürler Furkan. Sağ olasın. Ee, Seden sen mi söz almak istemiştin? Yani ben de Gözde Hocam da. Gözde Hocam başlayabilir evet, mi? Evet, buyurun. Teşekkür ederim. Ee, ben Cihan Hocam size çok teşekkür etmek istiyorum. Çünkü bizim şu anda burada bulunmamıza e, çok büyük vesile oldunuz. Sizin e, imkanlarınız sayesinde sizin sayenizde buradayız. Çok sağ olun. Çok büyük bir e, imkan. Çok büyük bir ayrıcalık. E, ben Şöyle kısa bir mesaj vermek istiyorum izleyenlere. Anne baba sözü dinleyin. Çünkü ben 1999'da mezun olduğumda annem bana dedi ki kızım yurt dışına git. Master'ını orada yap. Doktora yap. Akademisyen ol. Ben dedim ki hayır ben çalışacağım artık. E, ekmek parası kazanacağım falan. Şimdi <gülüyor> ben 1999'a geri dönsem de sizi o zaman tanısam da sizinle birlikte master yapabilsem de Dolayısıyla lütfen e, anne baba sözü de dinleyin ve bu imkanları lütfen e, araştırın arkadaşlar. Hocam binlerce kez teşekkürler, minnettarım. Sağ olasın, ben teşekkür ederim size, çok sağ olun. Gözde seni de alalım. Hocam ben e, de genel olarak teşekkür etmek istiyorum fakat kadın hocama da katılıyorum. Anne baba sözü dinlemek konusunda ben ilk yurt dışına çıktığım zaman üniversitede öğrenciydim. Bu Erasmus Öğrenci Değişim Programı ile gitmiştim Macaristan'a fakat giderken beni... Annem de babam da çok motive etmişti. E, hatta gitmeden önce bana çok böyle gitmem konusunda beni arkadan sürekli ittiren, motive eden annem Erasmus diye bir şey varmış, baktın mı, öğrendin mi? İşte anne daha bakmadım, neden bakmadın, hadi bak hadi git. Dolayısıyla anne sözü, anne baba sözü dinlemek o anlamda çok önemli. Sedan hocama katılıyorum. Hem bu panelde davet ettiğiniz fikirlerimize değer verip dinlediğiniz, aktarmamıza yardımcı aracı olduğunuz için... Hem de böylesine güzel üretici bir ortamda yer aldığım almamıza e, olanak imkan sağladığınız için çok teşekkür ederim destekleriniz için. Sağ olun. 
Ben, ben, ben de ben de ekleyebilir miyim? Evet, seni de görüşe alalım. Ondan sonra kapatalım. Çok, çok kısa hocam. Ee, ben e, en başta size çok teşekkür ederim. E, bize bu imkanı sunduğunuz için. Ayrıca e, Kadir hocamı da anmadan geçemeyeceğim. Kadir hocama, Burçin hocama hani vesile oldukları için buraya gelmeme. Çok çok teşekkür ediyorum. Sadece benim e, küçük nacizane yaşadığım e, buraya kadar gelen ki, geldiğim durumda sadece önemsediğim çok çalışmanın çok önemli olduğu, çok zeki olmamıza gerek yok. Çok çalışmanın önemini anladım. Ve zorluklar bizi güçlü kılıyor. Bunu da unutmamamız evet. gerek. Hele ki bu süreçte gerçekten evet. hani çok zorluk yaşıyoruz. Ee, psikolojik, fizyolojik ne olursa olsun bunları bir kenara bırakıp ne istiyoruz ve gelecekte ne istiyoruz düşünüp ona göre motive olabiliriz. Biz Sedan Hocam'la aynı evdeyiz. Tabii zorluk yaşıyoruz. Normalde dışarı çıkmamız, yani arada dışarı çıkıp nefes alıyorduk, alışveriş yapıyorduk rahat rahat falan. Bunları yapamıyoruz şu an ama evin içinde mesela e, akademideyiz. Ne yapacağız? E, hiç ara vermeden çalışmak gibi güzel bir motive durumumuz var. Ve e, ara verme durumumuz mutfakta buluşma oluyor genelde. <gülüyor> ama hani her şeye rağmen Hayat güzel ve bunun kıymetini bilelim. Bu süreç belki bize bunları öğretiyordur hocam. Ne güzel. Çok teşekkür ederim. Değerli hocam. Evet hocam. Bir, bir cümle ekleyebilir miyim? Buyurun. Günel, e, dün gece daha doğrusu 02.30'da Avustralya'da bir webinara katıldım. Konusu happiness'la ilgiliydi. E, bir psikolog uzman e, konuştu ve çok güzeldi. Dedi ki bu süreçte her şeyi yapıyoruz ama kendimizi ihmal ediyoruz. Önemli olan mutlu olmayı, sağlık Huzurlu olmayı da kendimize telkin etmek. Happiness çok önemli dedi. Evet. Hatta biz e, belki normale dönünce işler büyük şirketlerden başlamak üzere Chief Happiness Officer bir title da verip çalışanlara moral verilmesi Süper. sağlık dedi. Evet. <gülüyor> kesinlikle, kesinlikle. Hepinize tekrar çok teşekkür ediyorum. Bu arada son yorumlar var. Çağlar Karamaşa Merhaba hocalarım Eskişehir'den selamlar diyor. Biz de Eskişehir'e ülkemizin her yöresine selam gönderiyoruz. Merhabalar. Çalkın annemden öğrendiğim usulle ekmek pişirirken izliyorum yayınınızı. Herhalde annene de <gülüyor> bir şey yapıyoruz ya. <gülüyor> Annesine de selam söylüyoruz Özgür Çalkın'ın ve herkese. Gülay Evran da bize alkış göndermiş. Sağ olun. Tekrar e, görüşmek üzere. Eğer sorular olursa seyredenlerin bu video şu anda canlı. Gelenler var. Bir elli kadar kişi seyretti bizi. Ee, ama daha sonra banttan da seyredecek olanlar olursa e, buradaki panelistlerimizin hepsini Google'da küçük bir e, aramayla bulabilirler. Eminim onlar ben de dahil olmak üzere. Sorularınız varsa mesela bizim burada cevaplamadığımız ya da unuttuğumuz şeyler varsa bizlerle kontak kurabilirler. Hepinize tekrar teşekkür ediyorum ve tüm dünyaya, memleketimize de selamlar. Teşekkür ederim. Teşekkür ederim. Teşekkür ederim. Teşekkür ederim. Teşekkür ederim. Teşekkür ederim. Teşekkür ederim.